Hi everyone. Welcome to the first Cloud Foundry Summit to be held virtually. Before I talk about the platform or the event, I want to spend a moment to comment on some of the extraordinary things happening in the world today. We're here virtually because each one of us in one way or another is dealing with the novel coronavirus that emerged in late 2019. Most of us are still isolated at home. Many of us are concerned for the health and safety of friends, family, and ourselves. This is a very challenging time for the whole world, from individuals to companies to governments. Our goal as a community has always been to help developers go from idea to production in days and hours, not weeks and months. And so even in this uncertain time, we can feel proud that our platform has helped countless organizations respond to new requirements and changing conditions rapidly. There are examples of governments that have been able to get much needed benefits out to their citizens very rapidly. There are many examples of companies who have been able to survive and sometimes thrive by responding quickly to changing conditions. Now, certainly Cloud Foundry isn't the only way to make that happen, but many of these stories involve the Cloud Foundry platform being in place and helping developers for those organizations get new software and changes out quickly. We should be proud of that. Simultaneously, in the United States and increasingly in countries around the world, we're also experiencing an overdue, necessary, and important reckoning with systemic racism. Now, our community has always prided itself in being welcoming and inclusive and working hard to be diverse. While we may not have the power as a community to fix all the injustice in society, we are a place for conversation. Each of us should spend the time to understand our biases, both explicit and implicit. Each of us should spend time having empathy for those around us. I also encourage all of you to attend the diversity event later today. It's been a highlight of summits for years, and we've covered a range of topics related to diversity, equity, inclusivity. At this virtual event, we'll be focusing specifically on systemic racism. And we're really honored to have Dr. Shakti Butler of the World Trust Educational Services come to speak to this community about exactly that topic. Now, the foundation will continue to work to do our part to help dis dismantle systemic racism, in particular in technology, but wherever we encounter it. But Everyone needs to do their part. And so we welcome your ideas about what we can do to help drive change. Now, turning to Cloud Foundry itself, when I took over as executive director, I realized the energy of our community was growing around a new focus, bringing the world-class developer experience of Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes infrastructure everywhere. And we've come a long way in a very short amount of time. There are two upstream projects today that are both intended to provide that Cloud Foundry developer experience on top of Kubernetes, both kubectl and the cf for kids project. Now, they come at the problem from different but complementary perspectives. kubectl has a history going back into uh, SUSE as an open source project, but also you know, part of their commercial product. It's designed to provide the full Cloud Foundry experience as you know it today on top of Kubernetes. And it accomplishes that by packaging up Cloud Foundry and making sure it can be deployed and managed in a Kubernetes-based environment. The cf for kates project is, is fundamentally a, about reimagining our architecture. It takes a slightly different approach in that it's going to build from the basic functionality, CF push, and grow in capability over time. Each project team is using it as an opportunity to re-architect the way that their component of the system works, to include more projects from the broader cloud native open source community, whether it's the inclusion of FluentD or Prometheus, whether it's the deeper integration with Istio, whether it's reimagining how our own code can exist as CRDs within Kubernetes. Now, both kubectl and cf for kates are progressing quickly, and both projects and their teams behind them are collaborating actively and frequently. 
They did start with different perspectives, but they're very complementary and they're moving together into the future. The other exciting announcement that we made earlier this year was in uh, the launch of the Paquetto Build Packs project. It was launched in April, and it's a collection of build packs that are built by the same team that's been maintaining the Cloud Foundry build packs for years with all of that knowledge about what makes a high quality build pack and all the processes in place to make sure that they're constantly kept up to date with the latest features for your languages and frameworks, but also from security updates. Paquetto really represents a, a bit of a rebirth of that build pack effort. It aligns with the CNCF's Cloud Native Build Pack project specification, which means that it's compatible with many platforms. The Paquetto Build Packs can be adopted across the broad Cloud Native open source community, including Kubernetes users. I think that we should all be proud, and I am in particular proud that our community is sharing this deep expertise that we have over many years with the powerful Build Pack concept to all of those that are just being introduced to it and its benefits. The news today, though, is that we announced the general availability of the Cloud Foundry CLI version 7. Now, this has been a long time coming, and it's a very important release because it represents the first version of our CLI that uses the V7 CAPI APIs entirely. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Here's what that means. You get more capabilities more granular control, but some of the exact same simplicity that past versions of a developer of our developer experience have had. Whether it's ease of deployment using rolling application patterns, or whether it's running component steps of what the full CF push process actually provides today, right? Imagine exercising granular, granular, granular control over the process. These commands, you know, they break down the process into steps that you can run independently and can be run multiple times or repurposed. You can also push an app with multiple processes in the same container or as a sidecar container. Really cool capabilities to bring up to the developer. And in case you happen to deploy a lot of applications, as many users do, you get much more advanced metadata for you know, custom tagging to help you better organize and track your resources. So congratulations to all the contributors that made that possible, from the CLI project itself, to the cloud controller team, to the services API team, to every other team that's been involved in building the capabilities that are being delivered to developers. One other announcement we want to make this morning is to present a community award. Now, we have three different community awards that we'll be, we'll be um, honoring someone with over the course of this event. Today though, we're gonna focus on the inspirational user. Now in the past, this category has been awarded to companies or organizations. This time it's a little different in that the winner is an individual. And this was because the, the winner's nomination talked so much about, and several nominations talked so much about how inspirational they are as a power user of the platform, of Cloud Foundry, of Bosch, of Concourse, of just the practices that, that make teams effective using the system. He regularly pushes Cloud Foundry to its limits and shares these ideas with the rest of the community. His guidance, his insightfulness, it's thanked by many in the community. So I'd like to congratulate Andy Payne, who's with Engineer Better and previously of the UK's Government Digital Service for winning the Inspirational User Award. Congratulations, Andy. I'd also like to take a minute to thank our sponsors, all of them, but in particular, our Diamond sponsors, SUSE and VMware Tanzu, our Platinum sponsor, IBM Cloud, our Gold sponsors, NE9s and SAP. If you have a moment, please take time to go visit the sponsors in the exhibitors area, chat with them, you can schedule meetings, you can watch demos. Each one of them is bringing something different to that experience. Take the time to interact with them. Sponsors are what make the event possible. We also have a few more opportunities for you to collaborate. Um, there's networking, networking and attendee chat rooms available. Um, you can go take a look um, at the networking area 
um, or you can use it to have one-on-one -on -one text or video calls with other attendees. In order to help you um, get some inspiration to, to engage with the virtual experience, we've also provided a little bit of gamification. You can earn points by chatting with other attendees in a session, visiting sponsors, answering our event survey, and, and many more things. So the more you engage, the more points you're gonna get. The top 10 point earners are gonna win some really awesome prizes. Just a couple final points. I wanna remind everyone that we have a code of conduct and our community's welcoming, diverse, and inclusive environment is made possible because many of our participants implicitly understand what's in that code of conduct. But here in the virtual event, you need to abide by it. If you have any questions about it, it can easily be found in, there, in your dashboard. And if you have any other questions or you need any type of support, reach out to our event staff. If you have a look, it'll be in the event staff tab in the menu. And from there, we have people waiting to answer those questions that you might have. Last but not least, let's talk about future events. The European summit was intended to occur in Dublin in October. That event, unfortunately, due to the global pandemic, is gonna be going virtual as well. Timing for exactly when that will be is still to be determined. We actually wanna hear your feedback about how this event works and what could be improved or just fundamentally become different. We'll, we intend to craft a virtual experience that takes from our learnings from this first attempt and makes it even better. So please, respond to the survey, let us know how you, th how you experience this, and thank you. <laughs>